welcome to Into the Night. I'm Nari, your guide on today's excursion down a twisted path. Be careful not to get lost. Be it dark or light, it's easy to lose your way. Are you ready? Then let's begin. When the Circus Comes to Town Little Edie Franklin walked through the carnival runway, mesmerized by the colors, sounds, and the smells. The screams from the Tilt-A-Whirl caused her to stop for a moment to watch. Cassie Neiman, her enemy during the school year, sat in one of the cars as it spun and rolled. Tyson Parks, Carol Renner, and Ashley Stokes also swirled past Edie amid the blurry music and raucous screams. Edie had longed for the arrival of summer so she could escape her tormentors, and seeing them now brought back the pain of their taunts. The sweet smell of cotton candy and the corn dogs drew her attention to the food stand to the right. Digging out her hard-earned dollar bills, she slipped them to the worker and watched as he spun bright blue heaven onto the cardboard cone. Nothing said summer fun at the carnival like fresh cotton candy. The wind blew as she took her first bite of the delicious treat. Her long blonde hair became tangled in the blue cloud. It stuck to both her nose and her chin. She didn't care. She'd waited all year for this. At 13, her family finally allowed her to meet her friends at the carnival alone. Always before, her older brother or her parents insisted on accompanying her. Edie begged them this year to let her ride the rides and watch the circus performers with her peers, and they relented. The sad truth, however, was that she had no friends to meet at the carnival, or anywhere else. She was too short, too skinny, too nerdy, too ugly, all the descriptions made by her classmates, to have any friends. Edie lived a solitary life. Sometimes, her heart ached to belong to the crowd. But she told herself that they weren't worth it. No one who could be as cruel as they were deserved to be her friend. She was right, of course, but that didn't lessen the pain. So Edie walked the strip of carnival barkers and rigged games by herself. She was, for the most part, comfortable with her solitude. Walking through the crowd, Edie found safety in her sense of invisibility. She blended in with the crowd, much like zebras do in a herd and this insulated her from the mocking jabs made by people like Cassie Neiman. Young lady, step right up. Five darts for just two dollars. You're guaranteed to win a prize. A tall, thin carnival worker with bright red hair and large ears tried to entice her to play at his stand. Edie politely nodded her head no and quickened her pace so he would set his sights on someone more gullible than she was. She wandered with no real direction, but she found herself at the circus big top tent. The sign outside said the next show wouldn't happen for two hours. Edie popped her head inside the tent, hoping to catch a glimpse of the elephants. No one was around, so she quietly slipped all the way inside. It took a moment for her eyes to adjust to the dim light. The tent seemed bigger on the inside than it did from the outside. She edged her way around, disappointed that she found none of the animals. Where would they be? She heard the chatter of a monkey coming from outside the opposite end of the tent. A lion grumbled, and she heard the trumpet of an elephant. Of course, the animals were kept in their pens, not in the tent itself. A rustling of wings above drew her attention to the ceiling. Sparrows had flown into the tent where they flitted back and forth, sometimes landing on the trapeze swings. Edie giggled at the idea that the birds pretended to be circus performers. Still in search of the animals, she decided that she'd come this far, so why not slip out the back of the tent and get a close-up view of them? Animals brought her more joy than most people did, so it was natural for her to gravitate toward them. She believed she should spend her time at the carnival as she chose. No law said she had to stick to the midway. She pulled back the flap, and bright sunlight caused her to squint. For a moment, she clearly saw the animals and their cages, and Edie silently walked toward the monkeys. 
looking over her shoulder to make sure no one was watching her mischief. Peering into their enclosure, she swore they smiled at her. One even waved. They swayed and leapt, putting on their own circus show just for her as she stood watching for several minutes. Edie turned her head to the sound of the elephants, and almost as though the monkeys understood, they stopped their antics and waved goodbye. To get to the elephants, she had to pass the lions. The male contentedly chewed on a large bone, while the female lolled about, flicking her tail at the annoying summertime flies. As she rounded a corner to find the elephants, she heard the laughter of children. Had others snuck back here too? She tentatively peered around the corner. Six or seven children, whom she guessed ranged in age from four to fourteen, gathered in a circle. None of them looked familiar to her. Before now, she'd never even considered that the carnival workers had children of their own who traveled with them. She always viewed carnies as adults, with no ties to the world at all, as they moved from one town to another. Yes, these must be the performer's children. Undetected, she watched as the children played, amusing themselves by climbing a ladder to the top of a stack of pallets. A stack equal in height with another ladder towered about 15 feet away. Now introducing the elegant Ella. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the center ring. You will see an amazing demonstration of grace and death-defying acrobatics. A boy of about seven pretended to hold a microphone as he motioned his arms in a grand swing to point at a little girl who bowed and waved atop the pallets. The other children clapped and cheered as they played their roles as audience members. Edie smiled as she watched the little girl pretend she was about to perform on the flying trapeze. Her delight turned to horror as Ella jumped high, springing from the pallets into thin air. Edie gasped. The girl was going to hurt herself, and none of the other children seemed the least bit concerned. Then Edie saw why. Ella did not fall. She somersaulted and pretended to swing from a trapeze, but she clung to nothing but thin air. After sailing back and forth five or six times, Ella flipped and landed onto the other pallet stack, turning to bow and wave to the audience once more. The other children cheered as another girl clamored to be next. Bewildered by what she saw, Edie stepped backwards, her foot catching on one of the concrete blocks used to keep an animal trailer in place. She landed with a thud and struck her head on a rock. Thank you for joining me for Into the Night, an anthology series written by Caroline Giamanco, narrated and produced by Nari Kwok, with music created by Alex Sexton. Theme music by Nico Rodriguez. Our links are in the show notes. Into the Night is available on your favorite podcast directory, so be sure to subscribe and follow so you never miss an episode. We would really appreciate a five-star review, as it helps new excursionists to find and join us. Feel free to share with someone you want to bring along on our next excursion. I'd love to hear from you on Twitter at Into the Night Pod or by email at itnanthology at gmail.com. I'll see you next time. And remember, whether in the shadows or in the daylight, all twisted paths lead you into the night. Thanks for staying. While you're here, I want to share another amazing podcast with you. You know I love a good story, and these wonderful humans tell a very captivating one. Microphones and Monsters is a Cthulhu D&D actual play with a balance of horror, mystery, and comedy. Our story begins in a 1920s Magitech noir setting. We follow the story of Alistair. That power is very much something that I need, and I don't want that to stop. Victor. I don't think I want to help you. And Julian. It's burning. What happened here can't see the light of day. As they come face to face with Eldritch Horrors. (laughs) I don't think you could ever stop me. And try not to fall into madness. Go to microphonesandmonsters.com or listen wherever podcasts are found.